Hi there booktube, it's Eleanor here and today I'm doing a tag and I'm doing one that I'm really excited about. I'm not normally um, given to doing tags really, they're not really something that interests me but this one really piqued my interest and not only do the questions and the idea behind this pique my interest but it was really great that it came from a booktuber that I hadn't heard of before who I think is relatively new. So as well as a tag, this is a recommendations video because I definitely think you should check this booktuber out. It's called the Reading My Country tag and she has created it. Her name is Amanda and her channel is Cook, Read and Create. I'm really enjoying getting to know her channel and as soon as she tagged me in this I went to check out her channel, went to check out this tag um, and I'm really excited. The basic premise is that the questions will be different for whoever answers it. You're reading and talking about books from the country that you live in or were born in. So whichever country you see I suppose as home. So for me it's going to be England but even if somebody else who lives or was born in England does this tag their answers for this will be different because of where in England they were born and uh, the types of books that they enjoy. So let's jump into the questions, I'm very excited to get started. So the first one is what country are you going to be talking about and as I said before that country for me is England. Um, I was born and raised in England and have lived here most of my life. I travelled for about a year but other than that I have lived in England. Question two is what is your favourite childhood book from your country? Um, well here childhood and reading played a big role in my life so much so that during my baby shower for Matilda um, my family threw me a bookish baby shower and everyone was asked to bring their favourite childhood book with them with a little um, plate, book plate, writing why they have picked it and so I've amassed quite a few classics that I loved as a child that I'm really excited to share with Matilda as she gets a bit older. So let me just show you these because they're beautiful additions as well. Firstly, Noel Stretfield. Noel was born in Amberley, Sussex in 1895 and wrote The Ballet Shoes. I love this hardback edition. I think it's beautiful. It was my mum's favourite book as a child and so she gifted this to me for Matilda when she gets older um, at the baby shower. Another book that I loved growing up was The Secret Garden by Francis. Is Hodgson Burnett. I absolutely adore this edition. It's so beautiful. It's like a cloth bound cover and then inside um, it's got wonderful end papers and in fact this page end paper if you turn the page the door opens so you can open the door and see the secret garden. I just think that's such a wonderful touch. Um, and I loved this growing up as well. And I, I haven't reread this edition because I'm really excited about reading this with Matilda and I just think it will be a wonderful experience. Obviously coming from England and growing up in the time period that I did because I was born in 1981 um, so I've just aged myself there but I'm not <laughs> I never hide it from you guys and uh, I loved Roald Dahl hence uh, where Matilda's name came from my daughter's name and uh, this is Matilda and I love Roald Dahl's stories. Another book and author that I loved growing up was The Further Tales or The Tales of Peter Rabbit. I loved Beatrix Potter um, and this is a beautiful edition that uh, Matilda's grandparents gifted me for the baby shower. Um, and this is um, A Further Tale and this is by Emma Thompson who is a UK author and actress. Next is something that I loved. I remember loving these growing up and it's The Complete Tale of Brambley Hedge by Jill Barkalum. And I just think Brambley Hedge was such a big part of my life growing up um, and I really class them as sort of classic stories. Jill Barkham lives in Essex uh, in England and these stories just fascinated me. I loved tales with animals in and I think when I was growing up there was just so much beautiful illustrations in children's book and that's not to say there aren't now but obviously I read a lot less this sort of age group because Matilda's not quite there yet um, so the classics are all that I know and I love these. And one little bear captured my heart growing up and that was Winnie the Pooh. I have a beautiful edition here which is in a slipcase. 
It's Winnie the Pooh, The Complete Collection and Stories and Poems by A.A. A. Milne. And this is just a beautiful hardback filled with gorgeous illustrations. Oh, I just can't wait. I really hope that she's interested in reading these with me when she's older. Um, and if she's not, then I shall be diving into them on my own. And just another edition that I've also got is the Winnie Pooh collection. Um, again, this is was gifted to me by my grandmother, um, who remembers reading these to me as a child, which I think is wonderful, my nan. Um, and again, beautiful illustrations throughout. Um, and I do remember growing up, um, my nan being a big sort of advocate for reading and she's still a big reader now. We talk about what books we're both reading whenever I see her. So um, that is just a small selection of English authors and beautiful childhood memories that I have. So the next question is uh, a book that you read in school and that can be primary, secondary, whatever stage in school and I'm not sure here if it's meant to be a book that um, you read for school or a book that you read um, whilst at that age. So to begin with, I'm going to show you both. But first, I'm going to show you books that I was reading during my school time and by an English author, the wonderful J.K. Rowling, um, who is born and lives in England and wrote the wonderful Harry Potter series, which these were originally published towards the end of my school career. So I think I was 14 or 15, maybe, when these came out. Um, and so I definitely read them during the time that I was at school. Books uh, that I read while I was at school, I remember reading uh, a lot of Shakespeare, who again was English, and we read Romeo and Juliet, and we read A Midsummer Night's Dream, and I really enjoyed those, although I think that I have come to appreciate them more in later life as I understand a little bit more about the story and I'm less daunted about the way that they're written. So the next question is a two-parter. The first part is to talk about a book set in your favourite part of your country, and then the second is a place that a book set in a place where you would like to visit. So let's start with books set in my favourite place in the country. It might be a surprise for you to hear that my favourite place in the country is London. I really love London. I love it for its culture, um, its uh, bustliness, um, the amount of things you can see there, the museums, the food. I just think it's wonderful. I'm not sure I'd want to live in central London, but I definitely love London. And there is a plethora of books. There's Paddington Bear, Mary Poppins, which were some childhood favourites, and of course, parts of Harry Potter. And when it comes to books set in the place that I would like to visit that I've never been before, which is Liverpool, I'd really like to visit Liverpool, I've never been before, it's definitely on the list of places I'd like to visit. I actually can't think of any books that I've read that are set there, so if any of you can let me know some really good books set in Liverpool, then uh, put that in the comments down below, I would be very, very grateful. So the next question is historical fiction set in your country. Well, England is rife with history um, and historical fiction. So to name a few that I've really enjoyed, there's Fingersmith by Sarah Waters, The Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society by Annie Barrows and Mary Ann Schaefer, The Thirteenth Tale by Diane Setterfield, and a whole host of Philippa Gregory books which I read. I went through a phase of really enjoying Philippa Gregory and reading a lot of her books and her Tudor novels I especially enjoyed. Number six is a book which is by an indigenous author to your country. I'm not really sure that this applies so I'm going to skip this one which it says you can do in the um, in the notes that she has on her tag. So I'm going to move on to question seven. Question seven is a classic book from your country. I think I've mentioned quite a few of these already. We've got mountains of Shakespeare, there's Enid Blyton who wrote Noddy, The Famous Five, The Secret Seven, we've got The Secret Garden, there's Alice in Wonderland, um, so many classics to choose from that are uh, written by English authors. Next is a book from your country that you haven't read but you would like to read. Well on my shelves I have got um, quite a few or a couple of Zadie Smith books which I'm really interesting in, interested in reading. I want to read Philip Pullman's new book when it 
comes out. I'm very excited about that. And I'm really looking forward to reading Carrie Hope Fletcher's new book, which is All That She Can See. And I'm really excited about this one. Um, so sneak peek of a haul. Question nine is some of your favourite books and authors from your country. I think I've talked about quite a few already, um, but to name a few more. One book actually that um, series which I failed to mention in an earlier question is that I'm really looking forward to reading some Holly Bourne, especially the books that I'm going to put in here for you to see. I think there's three of them, maybe four, but I think there's three and I've heard nothing but good things and they're definitely on my list of books that I want to read soon. I really enjoy Alice Oseman's YA books, which um, she's a young uh, UK YA author and I really enjoyed her books, Radio Silence and Solitaire. I loved Tom Ellen and Lucy Iverson's book Lobsters. I wasn't as keen on their Never Evers, but Lobsters I really enjoyed and found quite funny. And again, that is a YA book. I absolutely adore Lisa Heathfield's Paper Butterflies. You will have heard me wax lyrical on this channel about her book. It is so moving and emotional and I'm really looking forward to reading her next book, which I have on my Kindle, so I really must get to soon. And of course, we can't possibly miss out Jane Austen, who I discovered last year and love. So um, most of her books I was um, truly taken with more than I expected to be and they really got me over the hurdle of being worried about reading classics. So this one was quite easy for me because obviously um, England has a lot of um, culture and a lot of history and a lot of books and authors so I'd be really interested in hearing the following people do this tag. Simon from Savage Reads, April from Get In Hooger With It, Helen from Helen Jepsen, Sylvia from Wish Fulfillment, and Christina from Christina de Vrais. So I really hope that they'll be able to do the tag. Um, I'm really interested in finding out more about their countries and authors and books that come from there. And obviously if you want to do it too, I would love to hear your thoughts. Anyway, that's it from me and I look forward to speaking to you soon. Bye for now, booktube.